One minute. So going back to political classes and the future of Nigerian democracy, I'd like to reiterate at this point that the foundation of every viable political system starts from the political parties. So we in Nigeria, most of our parties will lack internal democracy. All right. People get chosen by the process of Godfatherism. Those that deserve to be brought up by the system are suppressed if they don't have the buy-in of the Godfather. So their allegiance is not to the society. Their allegiance is not to the state, but to those that are given their opportunity to be to come out as candidates for election. So and this goes up from the state level to the national level. So when they're elected into power, they don't owe allegiance to the society. And that is the bane of our democracy. And that is the bane of our underdevelopment. Because politicians don't owe allegiance to the state or the people. So with you, if we want to restructure Nigeria, let's start from the basis, the foundation, which are political parties. We need to have viable political parties that have ideology that will bring up competent people to vital position. If you don't get it right at the party level, you can't get it right at the national level. You can't get it right at the federal level. So I believe going forward, we should go back and restructure our party system. We should have viable parties that can throw up candidates based on popularity, popular votes are not by manipulation by those that want to be in control of the party apparatus. As long as we don't get these things right, we'll still be in a situation of underdevelopment. Thank you. A situation of anarchy and chaos in our political space. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Inken. You know, while you're saying what you're saying, I was smiling. I was smiling. The reason why I was smiling is because you said that we, we have to go back to the basics and rebuild the parties. Question is, how do you rebuild the party looking at what has happened in Edo, where someone who was in APC has, someone who was in PDP in the last election four years ago, or three and a half years ago, is now moved to the APC and has been selected, and I use that word carefully, selected to be their party uh, flag bearer. And the same person who is in the APC has moved to the PDP and equally been selected to be the party bearer, uh, flag bearer. Then I laugh and I ask myself, where is that party reformation? Where is that party ideology? What are you giving people? What are you giving people to work for a party, stay within okay. a party and get their turn? It means the whole ideology we've been talking about just turns to nuts because it means nothing. If you just, you know, it, you know, it, it, it just means like just do whatever you can, uh, get popular, make your money, come into the party, we'll give you a weaver. Mr. Uh, Obunike um, uh, Ohebu said before that in his party in Anambra in the last election, their candidate was given a waiver. I mean, isn't that a legal lacuna that was craftily inserted by those who know that they want to manipulate and use the loophole to do whatever they want to do? Isn't that something that tells you and I that this is indeed a deficit that must be addressed? Now, and to my uh, uh, guest here, Mr. Ishmael, now you've been selected to be part of the um, uh, uh, APC caretaker committee. I don't know if that job includes refor reforming the party or restructuring your party, but if it does, please take these words to them. Take these words to them from here that we would want to see an, a party that is reformed whenever they come back with whatever you guys are going to do because Nigerians are watching and Nigerians are taking notes. On that note, I would bring back our guest. Two minutes, please, be time conscious, two minutes to just do a summary of your thoughts again. And I will start with Mr. Um, uh, Obunike Ohebu. Please, you have the podium now. Can you please, but let me make this point, pick up from what you said. 
isn't it, and I will pose this question for all of us who are party members and non-party members alike to think about this, isn't it a failure of parties in Nigeria that no party as we speak has been able to offer online registration or electronic membership? Isn't it, isn't it a tragedy that Parties cannot restructure. How can they restructure when they come into government, whereas the party itself is still not functional? How come that parties, as it stands today, none is able to have party membership where people pay, no matter how, how, how low they pay, is it one naira, 10 naira, or it's, which is irrelevant? Isn't it you know, something of shame to know that those that will come up to govern are not able to even put their houses in order. And when a man is not able to put his house in order, what is that man going to offer you on that? Yeah, I, I just wanted to express some worries. Um, for me, we have a very long way to go in Nigeria. Practicing democracy, the beauty of democracy is that people can make choices. But unfortunately, we will find in Nigeria that the choices or the opinion or the votes of the people don't count. And that is why they can get in there, do whatever they want to do, and get away with it. Is there anything I wanted to ask uh, the discussers? What do they think we are going to do, at least to get um, proper elections done in this nation? Because I think that's, the, that's an important factor in not having things done right in a political system. That's just a question. Thank you. Thank you very much. And in conclusion here, I have from Colin Sopara, who said, online registration is going to expose the scam in the numbers. We could also run our census online too, but they wouldn't want it. On that note, you know where we're heading to. It means that the things that we all clamor, the solutions we know. This is, again, in conclusion, Maz is okay here, a government that went into the last presidential election promising us that whoever wins the next election, once they come in, they would sign the electoral bill into law. As it is today, where is the electoral bill that will be promised? That has been passed by the National Assembly, and that electoral bill is within the presidency just for them to append a signature. Is that electoral bill being taken back to the National Assembly for amendment, if any, and bring back again? Isn't it a shame that we will be having a do state election, an own do state election, with the old electoral bill without the new one to test them, test run them before we get to 2023? Don't the people in authority see the needed urgency of time, the things you and I, the reason why we leave whatever we are doing and we assemble here to regurgitate and to massage ideas to see how we can compress them and squeeze them into functional things that can better the society that we call ours. On that note, people, thank you very much for this, for your time, this wonderful evening. I still will endeavor to push to see how we can utilize the opportunity that we have to, that we have with COVID-19. It will be, in my estimation, a tragedy of a generational monumental proportion if after COVID we still wallow in the same way and in the old ways of doing things that we knew before now. COVID-19 should and must offer us opportunities to make sure that things are done and things are done differently. Dan, I think I can hear you now. Uh, would I take your concluding thoughts? Can you please unmute yourself? Thank you very much for your time. 